Happy November 27th, day after Thanksgiving. Most people are out shopping the Black Friday sales, spending the money. We're out making the money. Or I mean, earning the money. Anyway, I got a call for a leak here at this house. We're going to go up on it. Uh, I was actually in the home. It's vacant, so I was able to see where the leak was. It's always good. If you can get in the home, find the leak, locate where your reference points are on the outside, and then go on out. I just got the ladder set up. I have not been up there. We're going to, I came up to grab the camera, and we're going to take you along and uncut, start to finish, how I go about finding the leak, some issues at hand, and if we, whatever we find, uh, possibly a quick learning lesson from it. So if you liked the video, give me a thumbs up, stick around, let's go start this one. Um, it's vacant, I was able to get into it with a code, second story, north side, closet to a bedroom has a leak. So you have a general idea where you're looking, I'm gonna bring you along, just kinda show you what I do, and how I look for the leaks. First thing I did when I got here, just did a general walk around of the property, set ladder up, haven't been up here yet because it's a 10-12, so I grabbed my cougar paws and a cushion. Yes, despite my OSHA safety ladder climbing video, I'm breaking the rules right now. All right, so knowing that this is the area of the closet, we're gonna look for flashing, valley, return, chimney possibly, it's all right in this area here unless there's an obvious damage of a limb busted through or shingles missing. Looks like they got step flashing in there, although it's not done very good. If you look, the flashing's up high and there's a nail hole right below it busted through. Same thing here. The flashing is extremely high. It's way up here. You can see it right there. Should be right above the uh, buildup right there. This it needs to be extended whatever the leak is higher than this so i don't think that's it that's actually right over the wall it's about midway in right up here so we're going to jump up and transition up here i don't suspect that it would be this you got a little bit of an overhang unless you get heavy wind driven rain it's not so much going to be there but just take a, gr a general glimpse of it Although the flashing is high, I don't believe that to be the issue. There's the problem right there, I bet. Just happened to see it looking up at it. So you got a flashing under here. I hope they have a flashing under there, which it doesn't appear to be. Typically the mill flashing like that is only a five by seven, so it's not very tall. But just looking here, it looks like there's a hole. I don't see any flashing, I see wood. Yeah, there's a little deteriorated piece of paper and then wood. So all your rain gathering above these sections channels to the valley. Everything from here up and it runs out. Chances are it's just kind of trickling in right here. Anything coming down this edge is channeling down, going right into it. That's right in the area of the leak. Just some other little things to note here. It looks to be Tamco shingle, which you know I can't stand because Tamco doesn't seal down. You can just pull Tamco shingles up with your fingers. Nails are not in a good spot. I don't have any history on this roof. I don't know the year, the age. You can just look at general things like the pattern. It's a cut valley. Chances are they didn't nip their corners. And I'll explain that right here real quick. If you got a corner right here, water catches this. It's the GoPro on it, can you see it? And it will trickle along that top edge and eventually get in under your shingles, follow a nail hole in, something. So if you do a cut valley, nip your corners. Manufacturers across the board started saying to do that years ago. Um, looks like some tree damage rubbing into the shingles right here. That's not a leak issue. Over time, if it doesn't do more damage, it could cause a leak. This chimney is hideous. You know, if you follow this channel, I cannot stand tar because of this right here. It looks like crap. And yes, I have had a few of you commenters in the comments. Thanks for commenting that you need to use a fiber mesh. It does have some sort of mesh in there. Fiber mesh, mesh, fiberglass. It just, tar breaks down, it cracks. If you want to differentiate yourselves from other contractors and other companies, don't take tar and smear it on a chimney. Actually cut the chimney. Grind it with a masonry wheel, bend aluminum, and make it a good, clean, professional job. I 
I don't see any other damage here. No obvious wind damage. Again, the leak is focused right here. I did just catch something right here with my eye. Just some grain was coming off. I see the fiberglass mat. Um, a tip of you guys that are do-it-yourselfers, if you're up on a roof or if you're a new contractor, if you're not aware, don't ever walk in your valley. Putting weight in there can tear, crack, and snap your shingles. You may not know you did some damage until you get a heavy rain. So it's always good practice to keep your feet outside of the, the valley. Just I got a shingle slid down over there. The roof's got some life to it. Actually, Tamco, south-facing side. So clear, wide open view of the sun here. South facing slope. You would think this had sealed down. Look at this. I know that's Tamco. Tamco sucks. That's another takeaway of this video. If you got a contractor saying Tamco's the bomb, it's because Tamco is cheap and it's putting money in their pocket. I also need to jump over to the detached garage back there. They want an estimate for replacement because it is shot. It's way gone. Other than that, the uh, moss, mildew, and lichen on this uh, slope here, you just don't get a lot of sun on it. You have a tree kind of blocking it. It holds moisture up on the roof a lot longer than other sections, and it actually feasts on the limestone that is in your shingles. You can actually do a soft wash, and you can clean this. There's plenty of contractors throughout the country. Check your local area. Just Google them. Soft wash, roof cleaning. Don't ever use a pressure washer. You'll tear the granules right off. It's actually a cleaning solution. You may see guys with a pressure washer shooting it up on it, but they're not putting high pressure on your shingle. That's what this stuff is. Actually, the lichen is this darker. Let me just find a bigger patch of it. Yeah, like this right here. That stuff is the lichen. You gotta be somewhat careful. If you pull that, you can actually pop your granules off under it. So that's not good to do. You wanna clean it with a cleaner. So anyway, I will get back to what I need to do here, figure a repair of this section. It doesn't feel like there's any rotted wood, so honestly what you could probably do to repair this relatively easy would be get a piece of flashing slid in here. And for those of you, I, I don't know if I'm gonna end up doing this, I'm definitely not doing it now. Take a knife and just slice this piece of fascia metal back a little bit. Time out for this quick information, commercial break. We're gonna do this quick little repair here, so if you have any interest in seeing how to do that, click the card up here, it'll take you to that video. Yeah, because the flashing has to go on top of this. So what I mean by that is that flashing you see right there is on top of this shingle, this is covering the flashing. You don't wanna flash behind it because guess what happens when water runs down here, it's going to hill, it's gonna go under that. So you wanna shove your flashing on top of it like this. So it carries a trough or a channel as the water runs down pulled by gravity, it will fall off of that flashing onto the shingle and onto the next piece of flashing and just repeat the process down. So slice this right here, bend a little piece of flashing, shove it up under, uh, behind this, in front of that, and go up under the shingle, get it up under the edge metal, and before you shove it in, you're gonna wanna cut about the pitch of the roof. You know, you got a 90 degree angle right here, you're gonna cut that down so you can actually shove that in all the way. And then just as a little added precaution, just take a flat bar and pop the uh, shingle just a little loose. It looks like there's a roll metal for the valley. Get another piece under that, shoved up just a few inches, and it kick out. So you're actually getting the water a little further past that crucial area. That's the simplest quick fix. It's not a new roof, I know, but it is a simple fix for the little issue at hand right here. This was an unscripted, uncut quick video of how I locate leaks. If you can get inside, it's much better. Once you find the leak inside, what I did is I just, I went through the house, got upstairs, found the leak, and I'm like, okay, well, there's a window on the west side. There's a closet right here with a dormer. So you go outside, you locate the window, figure out how many feet in, find the other window on this dormer right here, and it put the general location right in this spot. Now on your way up, you just look for the obvious damage, wind damage, storm damage, shingles missing, those types of things. Nails busted up or flashing. Typically, most roof leaks happen around flashing and valleys. So chimneys, pipe boots and vents like that up there, uh, returns, walls, anything that has to do with that. This is an installation error. Somebody did a crappy job, piss poor on it. 
It happens a lot around here in my area. I don't know why. Here in central Indiana, Kokomo to be exact, I come across, I keep channel clean, I almost said a bad word. I come across this crap all the time, but guess what, it keeps me busy and you guys can learn from it. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you're not. And what else do I wanna cover here? It's not too late to get in on the 2K sub giveaway. If you're not subscribed, click the subscription button, smash the thumbs up while you're right there and go to the video, 2K sub giveaway. Leave a comment, what you like about the channel, why you subscribed, what you don't like, and a number in between one and 2000. And November 30th, I think, 30 days in November this month. Yeah, I'll do a video showing the winner. So, thumbs up. Until next time, be safe and see you. Oh, by the way, if you're on a 1012 and you don't feel comfortable like this, don't do it. Don't get up on it. I am what you call a professional. It's cold out. I have a cushion and I have cougar paws. And yeah, all you haters. I'm doing this, not you. So if you don't like it and you want to leave a bad comment, just think it and don't type it. Till next time, be safe and see you guys then.